25 years later, we finally find out how Lisa Govan may have died. When your last known whereabouts is a bikey clubhouse, your manner of death is always going to be rough. But this was particularly grisly even by the standards of the Club Dero Outlaw Motorcycle Gang. Lisa Govan disappeared one October morning in 1999 after partying with Club Dero Andrew Edhouse and his mate Trevor Atkinson. Body never found, no charges laid. We knew that and a lot of other information about what happened to Lisa because we did a documentary about the case. Somebody thinks they've got away with murder. Police think Lisa Govan is dead. We all love you very, very much and want you back. It was the Wild West. It was bad people and really bad people. Do you know how Lisa Govan died? Yes, I do. Now, the last line in that promo is, do you know how Lisa died? And the answer given is yes. The bloke saying yes is a detective named Shane Russell. He was, until a couple of years ago, heading the cold case investigation into Lisa's suspected murder. And we wondered at the time, how could he know what happened? Yeah, nobody in handcuffs, right? So he couldn't have been that sure. Well, on Monday, in the West Australian Coroner's Court, we got the skinny. Andrew Edhouse, the court was told, stomped on Lisa's head while she lay on the floor of his gang's headquarters. Didn't just stomp on her, actually, he ran up to her body and jumped. On her head. Just horrific. And we know this because he apparently did it in front of someone else. Yeah, a Kalgoorlie builder named Kevin Smith, who was at the clubhouse door at the time of the alleged crime. Smith, we're told, then got in his car and told his employee about what happened. That worker, Ross Kimberly Edwards, was about 26 at the time. Ross came clean about the gruesome events of October 8, 1999, when he was questioned at the inquest into Lisa's death. He said, and I quote, we were driving back to the job site. He, that's Kevin, was a bit shaken. He told me he saw Crowey, that's Andrew Edhouse, run inside and jump on top of someone's head, a woman's head, inside the clubhouse. He said she was laying on the floor near the pool table and she wasn't looking in a good way. She wasn't moving and stuff like that. Tell you what, he's brave. He's brave now, not so much back then. The court was told he didn't give the cops the full story about what he knew because he feared for his life. Actually said, I'm even nervous just sitting here now. By 2010, he was so guilt-ridden, he told the cops everything. And that was the bit that we didn't know. That wasn't the only bit. We found out Ed House was arrested for the murder, but never charged. Smith was arrested for being an accessory after the fact, but never charged. Atkinson, who the court was told was at the clubhouse bar when Ed House killed Lisa, was arrested three times. But never charged. Five arrests. Nobody in the dock. Who says the bikey code of silence doesn't work? If you're interested in finding out more about this case, and believe me, your jaws will drop when you hear about some of the things the bikies and the cops have been keeping secret, you can listen to the podcast. <laughs> We'll run through the details each day of the inquest. Wherever you get your podcast. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.